Okay, so uh, now suppose you want to select a data frame. Uh, you want to select the columns from an existing data frame. Okay, now before I get into that, I'm going to show you some issues. So suppose I come to this website and I see this table <coughs> and I want to use it. So what is this? This is uh, cities making the top 20 list in population. So we have all these columns here. So if I just go and copy it, which I just did, and put it into here, and then I try to read it using this read table, I use the file chooser and I found it, and it says error. Line 1 did not have 12 elements. So I thought, okay, I'll go and um, try and like, this was, there was a space here before, so I separated it. I mean, I didn't separate, put it together in here and here. And then I counted one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There are nine columns. Now, why is it expecting 12? So I go and I look at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It should be nine. Why is it thinking of 12? Because that's what the error said. It said the first line didn't have 12, but I guess somehow it thought that it should. In other words, that other lines had 12. So why is it doing that? That's because, like here, and the country names, they're long, like here. I'll just change this to China, in fact. Maybe. And Colombia, da, 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 Buenos Aires. It's going to make it two. So now this probably should be like a comma separated, but I um, could try that actually. I wonder if I could do that. I'll try that also. Let me just try. That. So I'll go back and copy this again, paste it in here as a new one, and try saving it as. I'm going to separate it. How do I do that? Okay, let me try and put it in Excel. Now, I did it here. Looks like it kind of lined up. Now, actually, the first time I tried to paste it in, I went, this is Excel 2010. I, I right-clicked, and I did this, and it didn't work. But this one did work, so I did that. And it seems okay here. Oops, now it's stuck again. Okay, now it's working. Now, but look at this. This is, uh, first of all, there are blanks here, right? That could be cause us big headaches. But anyway, let's just see what happens. I'll save it as a CSV file and see how it works. Okay. Okay, I tried it again and I still get an error. So I just took out two columns that had blanks in them. And now I'm going to take out one row. Now, there must be better ways to do this, but I'm just going to do it this way. Now everything is filled in, I think. Let's try it again. OK, so I tried it with read table, and it still didn't work. But actually, I, should, I need to do read CSV, because now it's a CSV file. And if I try to use read table, I have to think about all these different arguments and what to say about them. So instead I tried read CSV and it actually did it. I'll show you. I did read CSV with the file choose so I could point to the file. This is the one that I... So it worked. Okay. So now finally we have some data. It's a little hard to see it because it's kind of displaying it all over the place here. I guess there's city, country, morph, morphian, world atlas, world gaz gazetteer, and city population. Okay. So it even didn't mind somehow with all this stuff here. I don't know. It accepted it. Okay, so you can see some headaches with working and getting data loaded into uh, the program. But I, and I had to delete information. There probably are better ways to do it, but for now, I'm just doing that. Okay? Okay, so now let's go back to the topic, selecting data frame columns by position. 
So you want suppose you want to select columns from a data frame according to their position. So there are actually a lot of different um, functions that you can use on this to select a single column. Uh, you can use something like this. Okay, first let me actually put this into a. Mm, okay, let me try putting this into a variable. Okay, so that did it. Now let me try. Make, let's see what what kind of variable is that. So do the S, uh, structure of CPOP and it's a data frame. So okay. Now let's try this. So I did CPOP one one. I'm sorry, CPOP like this. And this means the first uh, column. So it gives me just the values of the first column as a vector, and so they were the the cities, Beijing, Bogot. Bogota, I don't know why these comma, uh, question marks are showing up. Uh, Buenos Aires, Ca Cairo, and so on. So if we go back to the original data, we can see that th that's what the th first column was, the cities. Notice that these are not part of the data. This is just external numbering. Just um, So we can see that the cities with the largest population are Beijing, Bogota, Buenos Aires, Cairo, Delhi, Dhaka, Guangzhou, Istanbul, Jakarta, Karachi, Kinsha, Kinshasa, and so on. And if we want to know what kind of data is in this first column, and it's it's pretty clear what it is, it's not um, not numeric for sure. You might think it might be um, character, but it doesn't have quotation marks around it, so it's, I think it's not character. Anyway, you can do class for this to find out what it is, and it's a factor. Okay, so it's a categorical variable. So if we do this one with two, we get the second um, column. Let's see what else we have. And these are numbers. So if we did We want to know what kind of data this vector has. It's a number. It's an integer. Okay, so this uh, we can use to access the columns. Now, suppose I did, instead of uh, double brackets here, I put just one bracket. Um, and then I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to actually just run this. I'm going to just, just check the class of the result. It's before we got, what was the class again? It was a factor. And now, if I just do one bracket instead of the two brackets, it's a data frame. So what does that mean? Well, let's just try and see what we actually get here without asking for the class of it, but just that. So you can see that we get the same stuff as we got before, but before it was just a, it was a vector but now it's this is actually a data frame, and I guess this is a kind of signal that it's a data frame. You know that we have these column, uh, the column, sorry, the row names there, or the row, I'm sorry, the row numbers there. Whereas when we did it before, we didn't have that. Where is it? Here. Mm. We didn't have it, right? It just listed them out. These are not the um, these are the element names. So these are sort of you can ignore, but this just means this is the first element, this is the se seventh element, this is the thirteenth element, this is the f uh, and so on. But anyway, here it becomes a data frame. So if you do it that way, it's a data frame. So if you want to have it in the form of a data frame then do it that way. If you want to have it in the form of just the vector, then do it the other way. Now suppose you just wanted to have this column and this column. Or let's say just this column and this column. So 
but when you're putting them together you're saying you really want a data frame um, so how would you do that which column is this by the way one two three four five, six, seven okay so how would you do that you're saying you want a data frame if you want two columns really so how would you do it well if you want a data frame then we're not this just gives you a vector the double uh, brackets gives you a vector and we saw the single brackets give you a data frame so if you want a data frame how should you do it you should do it like this right so you only have the single brackets here and then you're, you're inside you're putting columns 1 and 7 so you get that so now we get the city and the population okay okay so I'm going to stop here and this is going to be called part one then I'm going to continue with this in part two